You've probably all heard the aphorism, the popular saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. And for the Pharisees and scribes in our gospel reading today, this phrase rings true. You see, they were a people that equated uncleanliness to sin or evilness, and conversely, cleanliness was a sign of holiness. Cleanliness is next to holiness, or godliness was never more true than in the ancient Jewish culture. But Jesus is going to challenge this long-held belief. In challenging Jesus' dinner etiquette in our gospel reading today, it seems that for the Pharisees and scribes, the uncleanliness was more powerful than the cleanliness. For them, the sin was more powerful than the holy. The cleanliness and holiness were overly susceptible to corruption. Their purity was fragile, and it needed to be maintained with strict etiquette rules. As always, Jesus is more than happy to correct them and teach them that cleanliness is not next to godliness. God is willing to get God's hands dirty. That's what this whole Jesus ministry thing is all about. Holiness isn't as weak and corruptible as they might imagine. They have it backwards. When the sinful and holy touch, the sinful doesn't infect the holy. The holy infects the sinful. Restoring and healing in ways that only God can make happen. Jesus responds to their criticism in our reading today in a way that challenges the long-held traditions of the Pharisees and scribes. You see, Jesus is definitely not shy in correcting their misunderstandings about what makes them unclean, what defiles them. And even though these people don't like him and what he's trying to teach, Jesus still desperately tries to help them understand that their salvation, their holiness, comes from God, instead of their own work in trying to keep themselves pure. The problem that they just can't see, like a log in their own eye, is that they are stuck in themselves and their human traditions equating man-made rules to godly rules. They simply aren't able to see that they're wrong. So in love, Jesus, he's going to correct them. Operating our lives out of a mentality of cleanliness is next to godliness results in fear-filled lives. Lives in which we seek to avoid anything that might defile us. The problem with this, though, is that what we as Christians are really called to do is to get in the dirt, in the pig troughs of humanity, and surround ourselves with the people that need the most help. The truth is, our holiness comes from God. And each time we get dirty, it is Christ who comes and wipes us clean with the robe that is washed in his blood. I assure you that you can trust, because Jesus said it, that there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. The power of Jesus Christ's cleanliness and a holiness in your life trumps the power of anything that the Pharisees and scribes would claim is unclean. Speaking of blood and how Jesus challenges his disciples to a deeper understanding of what can defile us, I'm reminded of an issue of a German magazine called Vanguardist that was published a few years back. And I have a rendering, it right he rendering of it right here in my hands. And in an effort 
to increase awareness and draw attention to the increasing rate of HIV and AIDS worldwide, the publishers of Vanguardist created a red letter issue that was printed with ink containing HIV positive blood. To create it, three people living with HIV donated blood for this project. Uh, the purpose of this issue was to shock you because you're probably unaware of the shocking statistics that there has been an 80% increase in HIV AIDS infections in the last decade. Like Jesus in our reading today, the purpose of this magazine is to challenge our preconceived notions of what defiles us. It is to challenge us to put ourselves in contact with the unclean. The publishers of the magazine wanted the audience to know that although the idea of touching traces of HIV positive blood may spark a visceral reaction of fear or revulsion, scientifically, the virus dies naturally outside of the body. It takes only about 30 minutes for it to decompose and that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention confirms HIV cannot survive outside its host for long. The publisher well understood, though, that some people are not enlightened enough to touch the ink. So when they sent the magazine out into the world market, they had to cover it in a plastic bag, thus protecting those who may accidentally come in contact with the HIV ink. Like Jesus' message that challenges us in our gospel reading today, the words inscribed on the label of the outer bag challenge the potential audience with the phrase, break the seal and help break the stigma. Like Jesus trying to get his audience to understand the truth about what defiles, in the opening pages of the magazine, Vanguardist publisher and CEO Julian Weil writes, if you're holding the infected print edition in your hands right now, you'll get in contact with HIV like never before. It will make you reflect on HIV and you will think differently afterward because now the issue is in your hands. The message of Jesus Christ and the message of this special issue of Vanguardist teaches us that we need to accept the challenge to open ourselves up to new understandings. Throughout his ministry, Jesus shows us the way to do this, the way to follow his faithful example by challenging unfounded human tradition. Like us touching the cover of the magazine, Jesus makes contact with the unclean. Actually, his entire ministry of healing required him to reach out and make physical contact with all the people that the ancient Near East society tossed out to live in the outskirts of their cities. Like Vanguardist teaching us that a dead HIV virus has no power to defile us. Jesus teaches us that while our own securities might tell us that something is dangerous, in all reality there is nothing that comes from without that has the power to defile us. In our gospel reading today and in this magazine, we see God wanting his disciples and all those that God loves to make contact with the unclean, to touch the lives of those who most desperately need our help. To make this even more clear, we know that Jesus wasn't afraid to touch and heal the lepers and other unclean people in his community, and neither should we be afraid to touch those with HIV and other diseases and problems who need our help? 
because it is not by touching them that we are defiled. But it is by allowing our own securities to stop us from helping that we are defiled. You see, we don't have to worry about getting dirty. Christ has freed us from the power of sin and death, and we are free to get in the dirt and hang out with the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and all the people that most of society want to toss to the curb, to the outskirts of town. Like the progressive German men's magazine Vanguardist, Jesus challenges our cultural norms and even our intuitions in that we are called to surround ourselves with the things that most of society fears and therefore tries to forget about. But trust in the value of Christ's word in that you aren't going to get defiled by things that come from outside of you. It's what comes from your heart that defiles. And know that cleanliness is not next to godliness. Because it is by following Christ's example of fearlessness in getting dirty that we are actually brought closer to acting like God. Amen.